Have you been talking to him since they've been back and back in California, maybe last night at all, just to, just how he's feeling, how the team's feeling? I have. I've been talking to him nonstop. We text all day, every day, uh, just basketball, non-basketball. And I think the team's ready. We let two games get away from us that I think we had. And I, I think those guys are ready to celebrate in Oracle tonight. It's, you're in Toronto. That's too bad because I know you were telling me off camera you've been there for every every one of the other games up until this point, even the earlier games in Oakland. Um, so you saw this play then uh, from the last game. I just want to bring that last play to mind. Can you talk me through how you were experiencing it, the ball when it went from Kawhi to your brother to Fred and then on to Kyle and then that miss on the shot just in the last seconds? What was going through your mind as you were watching that? Uh, in the arena, it happened so fast. And going home and watching it on TV, it seemed so slow. But I think that we had a good opportunity. And, um, you know, Kyle took a good shot. It just so happened to be blo uh, blocked. But exactly. I think that if we had to take that shot again, we would take it. But not Fred? He didn't get a good look? Did he tell you about that at all? Because he passed it off. No, we didn't talk about that too much. Uh, he, he looks to set up other guys. But I believe if Fred thought that he had a good enough look, he would have taken it. I think you're right. I mean, for sure. I mean, he's been so clutch for the team at key points. What is a, what does a big brother think when he watches little brother play so well and mean so much? Uh, it's hard to put it into words. You know, as kids, every, I think uh, all kids grow up and they dream of being in the NBA Finals if you want to be a basketball player. So for us, this is something that is a dream come true. And honestly, I couldn't can't even put it into words. But to see him out there living out his dream, it just it makes the whole entire family and the city of Rockford really proud. And I definitely want to talk about your hometown. But, you know, one of the things that Toronto fans have been talking about is how well he's been playing since he became a dad. And he was going back and forth and he kept talking about how exhausted he was. But he's he's really um, been lighting things up since the birth of his son. Has he, has he talked about that with you at all? He has. Um, you know, before he had Junior, he was in a slump. And I think that just having his son and getting away from the game in the midst of all of the, you know, just the, term, the turmoil that was going on. We were down and he wasn't playing good. And I think just to get that refreshment in life and to remember that there's way more to life than just basketball, no matter how big the stage is. And I think just taking him out of that element for even an hour, two, few hours, it really reset his mind and cleaned his mind out and he's just playing with free careless basketball and it's beautiful to watch. Well it is and you're watching it your family obviously fans here in Toronto but they're also watching in your hometown of Rockford Illinois which is a city uh, which has its share of troubles to be sure in the state of Illinois and Rockford Illinois is the only American city outside of the, the Canadian Jurassic Parks where they have Jurassic Park to cheer on the Raptors and in particular to cheer on your brother. Help us understand here in Canada what your brother means to the folks at home. Uh, honestly, I'd say he would be the Drake of our city. Um, in Rockford, Illinois, we've had a lot of people that have gone on to do successful things, but we haven't had anyone on this stage nationally that uh, consistently reps and does things for the hometown like Fred does. He is an ambassador for the city. He's the ambassador of basketball in Rockford. And he, all we do, that's what we do. We are dedicating our time as his team to make our city a better place so we can hopefully get another kid from our hometown into the NBA or the NFL or just create more doctors and lawyers and really just uplift the youth in our city. Well, it's incredible to read about the summer camps, the dinners, uh, the not-for-profit organizing, touching souls, shoes for students if they hit certain academic benchmarks. This is all what your brother's all about. And so no wonder they hold him in such high regard. They will be celebrating for him tonight for sure if the Raptors should go on to, to win. I'd like your take because you've seen now how the team is supported in Toronto and across the country. You've seen Jurassic Park up close in Toronto. Do you have a sense about what your brother, what this team means to this country, Darnell? I do. I see it every day. Um, being an American, uh, we kind of take sports for granted. 
uh, meaning, you know, Toronto has one professional sports basketball team. So you see how passionate the fans are, whereas in, uh, not in, I'm sorry, in America, you have, you know, plethora of teams you can choose from. But just that that sense of camaraderie and the, the, the way that the nation gets behind and they sing Oh Canada before the game is just passionate and you feel it. And it's just something that is just you can only experience in Toronto. Well, listen, uh, he's a fan favorite to be sure. Maybe never so much when he was uh, appearing with his broken tooth and the stitches under his eye after <laughs> game four. Uh, but And when we hear about all the things he contributes to his community, uh, certainly even more of a fan favorite. Oh, there's the shot before we go. Thanks for telling us about your brother Darnell and for your family and for you. Enjoy tonight and, uh, and we'll see what happens. Want to give me a go, Raptors? Go, Raptors! Game five, there you were experiencing that craziness in Scotiabank Arena, only to have the Raptors lose by one. What was it like for you there? Uh, you know, obviously we were a little bit frustrated, but, uh, you know, it's the NBA Finals. You know, things things happen, and, and, you know, a little bit of mistake here and there, and, and now we we see ourselves down, especially after Kawhi start, you know, uh, started taking over the game. But, you know, uh, stuff happens, uh, and, and maybe it was not meant to be. Uh, uh, but uh, I believe we're kind of trying to close it the way we were supposed to. And, and I have faith that tonight is going to be better. I see the word faith over your shoulder. I think with a lot of fans, it's another kind of faith I know. But faith in the team is, is, is key, for, uh, key for tonight. What, was your brother, what did your brother tell you when you saw him or talked to him? What did he tell you about um, what happened in Game 5? Well, we we really try not to talk about it because we, you know we both understand. That we, you know, sometimes you don't have to talk about things. You kind of know what happened, and, and you know it was all about let's move on to the next one. So that is tonight, Game Six in Oakland. Um, this is a big, big moment, that closeout game. We know how tough it is, but the emotion for him early in his NBA career to be on this point. I mean, tell me about how he's really sort of feeling mentally, psychologically, emotionally about about what is out there? You know, Pascal is a strong kid, you know, from everything that we have been through. I, I, I don't think this is really going to phase him by any means. I mean, it's, it's basketball. He's, you know, he's blessed and honored to be where he is now and to be able to play this game at this level, you know, after his third year, he's at the NBA Finals. It's a blessing. He's taking a while, uh, and you know nothing really fails him. Uh, obviously, he wants to be a champion, and I and I truly believe he would be. Uh, and you know, we we kind of go with that, and uh, yes. you know, just embracing the moment. He was so incredibly strong in that first game. Everyone talking about where that came from, the 32 points, the eight rebounds, the five assists, the blocks. I mean, you saw that phenomenal performance. Um, he has not been to that standard as these finals have gone on. Um, and I'm just wondering, is, it, is everything OK or, or anything going on of concern? No, there's no concern about, about Pascal at all. Uh, and I know, I just, for some reason, I woke up this morning knowing that he's going to have a great impact in this game tonight. Uh, I know that for a fact. You know, we, we, we don't ever have to talk about it. We just kind of sense it and feel it. Uh, that first game performance, and, and I believe he's going to have to have another one just like that to close it. And it would be. That's really good to hear because when your brother has a good game, the team has a good game. It's they're often, you know, so closely linked, and so I'm glad to to know that the big brother feels it. Uh, we talked on Monday about the Siakam family. Pascal's the youngest of six, and. Yes. The family story is so much a part of his basketball story. If we take a look at a, at a picture, people who know his story know that he writes on his sneaker. There you see them there. He grabs a Sharpie, writes 1023 on his left shoe. He writes a rest in peace dad on his right. Uh, your father was killed in an automobile accident back in 2014. And he's always talked about how that's the motivation for him. So if there is a win tonight, let's just talk about your father and... Uh, what this means to your family, Boris? I mean, it means a lot. You know, I, 
every time we talk about the boys, we, we, we don't mention the girls, but uh, we have two strong sisters and, and they're, they're, you know, they're cheer from, from far away all the time and they're always supportive of Pascal. We got a sister, Raisa, and also Vanessa, who lives in France. And uh, Raisa lives here in Kentucky with me. And, and uh, you know, those girls are strong girls. They're always supportive of Pascal. Uh, he will means a lot to her family because uh, because uh, whenever I start playing basketball, my dad had a dream that one is you know the one of his children gonna play in the NBA, and 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 Pascal made that come true. And you know <laughs> we usually chose around you know uh, play around and talk about how he's a chosen one, uh, and, and uh, you know which is true. And we just blessed to be where we are today. And we also understand that, you know, that this basketball is bigger than all of us because it was my dad's dream and, and, and we don't take that for granted at all. And that's why Pascal plays so gracefully and plays so hard because he want to keep the dream alive, if you will. And, and it will mean the world to us. You know, the Pascal ended up being a champion. Either if it happened tonight, and I just have a great feeling that it's gonna to happen tonight, you know. But yeah, don't hold me to it. But I, I just, you know, that's just the way I'm built. I'm, I'm, I'm some sort of visionary, and 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 I, I have a strong faith, and I believe that it's gonna happen. We're gonna go with that, Boris. And thank you, your family <laughs> and your father and Betty's watching from somewhere. And uh, what a proud moment for all of your family with your brother doing so well. Thank you again for the time. It's a pleasure to have you on our program. Oh, well, we do appreciate it. Oh, we, we also got to thank mom. Yes. <laughs> yeah, mom Victoria, thank mom. Yes, yes. For all those years yes. of looking after Pascal and giving him the hot oh, chocolate yes. that he loved so much that, when he was a little right. boy. That's right. <laughs> she always makes sure he had everything that he needs. And, and then we, we was kind of all protective of him all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> thanks to mom. Yeah. Memories of dad. And thanks again to the family. Boris Siakam.